This is the final installment in a three-part series about the new Stanford Hospital. On the first installment, Bert Hurlbut, Vice President of New Hospital Construction, gave me an overview of the project. Then Chad Reeder, Controls Manager, took us all on a tour. On this segment, we'll take a closer look at the technology being used on the job site. First, let's see what Chad had to say about the use of BIM and other technology on this amazing project. So Chad, let's talk a little bit about how BIM has been used on this project throughout. So we started this project uh, three years before construction started with some pre-con, uh, pre and we started with the BIM model in pre-construction. Uh, again, our, our, our uh, uh, goal was to get as much of the construction uh, designed virtually before we started construction, so therefore we could eliminate as many problems as possible. Um, hopefully 80% of the problems. So when you come in the field and you have issues in the field like here and you look up and you look around here, that you can get the, the issues resolved uh, in the office as opposed to out in the field where it costs a lot more money and takes a lot more time to fix it. So you look at it as BIM being really central into a massive project like this. Absolutely, absolutely. It would take, it'd be much more challenging to try to do this without BIM, absolutely. So is technology critical to being successful, advanced technology on projects like this? A absolutely. Again, uh, we are in a trailer where we were. It's a 30,000 square feet trailer that's a quarter mile away from the uh, construction site. So any changes that happen in the trailer, if you had to get some new drawings over here or the data over here, uh, with somebody walking back and forth all day, you're going to lose a lot of time, a lot of pr productivity. Um, as we can get the data over here real time, um, through our wireless network here and through the cellular networks, uh, we can get our drawings updated uh, almost real time. As we all know, there are many trades and partners and subs that are required to leverage all the data. While I was on this job site, I had the opportunity to see firsthand how Caparelli KHSNS contractors is using the technology. Ed doesn't have time to keep walking into the trailer every hour to get the new update or whatever. They can push it to, to, we're using plan grid on this project and blue beam as well, to get the design out here to Ed as fast as possible so we can try to keep that design ahead of construction. Uh, one of our, one of our um, constraints is its fact that we are under the jurisdiction of the state. And the state requires that all changes that are quote unquote material are blessed by the state field staff. And they're only here once a week or maybe twice a week. We can't, get the, we can't always get the drawing out immediately, but we can get out here as fast as we can after one of those meetings. And so again, Capital has done a really good job of keeping that data flow here, not making people walk back and forth. So we have 600 workers here going out, coming back, going out and coming back. We lost some productivity to do that. Where we can at least now force the, you got a landing page there, uh, using, um, you guys use Bluebeam for your landing page. Yes, sir. And so they have their, their submittals here, their R5s that get answered here as well. So they've kind of done it their, themselves. So one of these places where as an owner where we can grow and get more efficient is to have, is to have this as a project-wide, right? Have a project-wide landing page for all the RFIs, all the submittals, and try to get that into one central um, dashboard for us. Great, so let's take a look at that. So, so yeah, what we got here is this is like our landing pages. So we got a button that we can push for RFIs or open up all the RFIs we have. Uh, if we need to know what wall types, we can do that. If we need to check door and window schedules for sizes or swings, we can do that. Uh, we have an exterior for our exterior. And then we can go to, if I got good reception here, let's say I need to look something on the third floor. I can pull that up. But I could, uh, when we pull up our landing pages, I can go to layout drawings as well figure out layout. If I need to figure out a layout, I always have this with me, so I'm not going back to a table somewhere in the middle of the job. I can almost grab everything I need right so here. So it makes it pretty easy for you to see whatever you need when you need it. Absolutely. And so imagine if you had really paper, Really convenient. Right? You know, 10 years ago, everybody had paper, so now you're trying to get these papers every day, every morning. Cabinets you, everywhere. Everywhere, exactly. Yeah. And what's the latest one? He doesn't know. So now he knows, and it's instance to his whole team. It's not that cabinet has the latest one and this one does or whatever. Everybody gets So everybody it. has the changes immediately and can look at them at the same time. Correct. So when he's on plan grid, that is um, every sub on this project uses a plan grid. So for his, the way they're doing the RFIs, that's Caporelli's doing that. But for like our plan grid, as soon as uh, CMC updates the plan grid drawings, that immediately gets distributed to anybody who has an iPad out here or a BIM workstation. So. Finally, as all of you know, no job is complete without a GC. So, of course, I had a chance to delve into the use of technology on the project 
with Greg Schoonover of Clark McCarthy. Let's take a look at what he had to say. So, Greg, it was really great. We toured the new hospital that's going to be built, and you guys with Clark McCarthy have done a lot of involvement in the technology. Can you tell me a little bit about the technology, BIM, and the things that have been involved? Certainly on, on the BIM side, um, we, you know, we've been involved since pre-construction, been co-located with the design team in Stanford, uh, up in San Francisco and Palo Alto. Uh, that was during the pre-con effort, and then uh, just rolled that out into construction. Uh, here in the co-location with the entire team. So we have all the decision makers here in one uh, one area. So that certainly helps when we run into clashes and issues in the model. And then we're also using uh, ProjectWise, which is the uh, platform that we share models, and that's real time. Um, and we, we share with all the major subcontractors and ourselves. So when we're working in the model, you can see what, what really what other individuals are doing. So it's always a real time um, um, a content. So, um, so there's no, there's no updating it, and then a week goes by, and the model ends up being stale, or you know, uh, I guess, I guess other changes have been made. So, um, so we're utilizing that on the BIM front, and then on the modeling side. So, how important is technology on a project of this caliber and, and magnitude, I should say? Um, it's extremely important. I mean, we're using it in all aspects. I mean, on the document control, uh, we have no paper plans on the job. That's all done through uh, plan grid. Um, so when you know, I, I think we saw an example out one of the one of the subcontractors out there from Caprelli KHS and S had his tablet or his iPad. He's got direct access to the most current documents. So when we get issued documents from Stanford, we, we upload those in the project uh, in the, excuse me in the plan grid. Um, so those are kept consistent, and then also our trade managers update daily all the RFIs that we get on the job. So those are the most current documents that everybody's got access to. When we look at technology now and projects like this, it becomes challenging. You have to integrate a lot of different subs and partners involved in this. When you look at projects that you've, other projects that you've had to work on, how complicated in looking at some of the hurdles have you had to overcome and change orders and RFIs and thinking about all the other things? How many things have you looked at this and said, it wasn't easy. We've had to work together and use technology to make yeah. it come together. Yeah, it's been, it, there's, there's a lot of moving parts. I mean, the information flow is key, uh, especially to the, to the 600 plus trades that we have out on the project. So again, the importance of having access, um, having the connectivity out on the site to plan grid. Um, that's important. Um, also, you know, we do daily huddles with our teams to make sure that we're, um, you know, I mean, heading down a consistent path, making sure the design team is on that same same page with us. So it, it's constant communication, not only here in the co-location, I mean, verbally, but also certainly electro I mean, I mean, electronically with everything we got going on with with the documents and stuff that we utilize. The other thing too that's been actually, uh, it's we've had a lot of great successes on the job, but certainly one of the more positive one is right now we're using project inertia for uh, for our inspection process. So we've worked extremely well with the IOR team and our quality team, and we've got a 99% uh, first time pass rate um, on a job of this size is, is extremely uh, uh, hard to do, and it's been a great effort on our team's parts. And looking at inspections like that, that's almost practically impossible when you think of a project like this to, to get 99%. Certainly. I mean, I think Bert mentioned uh, in the pre-walk, I think we're up to over 50,000 inspections on the job, so that's, that's a pretty good feather in our cap to do that. So. And right now you're near the finish line. Yeah, we're getting close, getting close. You can see the light at the end of the tunnel, so we're looking forward to getting done and wrapping up strong for Stanford. I would like to thank Bert, Chad, Greg, and everyone at the new Stanford Hospital for giving me and the entire Construct Tech team the opportunity to tour the project. Thanks for watching our three-part series on the building of the new Stanford Hospital. This is certainly more than someone you should know, but what you should know.